G'day and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. So today we're looking at Delta V and we are talking about mining. That's right, how to, how to efficiently mine your way to a good pile of dosh. So let's get into this save I've got here. So as you can see, my craft is here in dock. And it is the Tubby McTubness. Um, it is, what is this thing called again? The Cothon 212. Yeah, that's right. There it is. And all its oddly shaped glory. So, this is the ship I am going to recommend that you work your way to. I've seen a lot of people using these and they look pretty cool. But if we go to examine the ship, you can see that this has 405 meters cubed. And if I click on this one, it has 125 meters cubed. And that is a lot bigger than that. Oh, there's one there. That would have been easier, right? So that is why I recommend this ship. So the other reason is that it has four low stress hard points. Now this means that you can fit two uh, nano hauler, nanobot hauling uh, modules. And you can fit two, one, two, uh, point defense microwave array. It's not really an array, is it? It's just my point defense microwave dish. Anyway, this is what I'm going to recommend as your setup. Now we'll get to my ship and have a look. So I've got low stress hard point left is point defense microwave, and right is point defense microwave, and then again at the rear, haul drones, haul drones. Now um, I'm not using as a seal in the ammunition slot. I have the Harvester class nano drone storage. Just work your way up. Just get your basic and work your way up. Um, interplanetary propellant tanks. Now that's kind of useful if you're using uh, the non-remassing uh, or processing uh, modules, but uh, I am using a remass at this stage um, and I'm going doing my dives with low fuel levels and and filling up my tanks while I'm there. Um, now you can see I've got you know, a little bit, you're gonna need a bit more power on this ship, like all the power. Um, but here we are, you see, first thing you'd wanna do, get the cargo baffles, get out there and just drift, like I'm gonna show you in a bit. Um, set up your drifts or your, or your sweep mining, as I'm gonna call it here for, for ease. Um, so you set up your sweeps uh, and just go for it and you know get get a full cargo come home and work your way up to uh, at least uh, the Nakamura Nakamura uh, MPU and that's going to give you a nice remassing so you can uh, save on fuel there and you know fill up while you're there and eventually you may want to go to the Voyager RSLS fabrication plant um, this could definitely be worthwhile getting you lose a little bit more uh, cargo space. Um, and again, it does look like both of these are susceptible to jamming. Jamming. So if all your cargo comes down like and, and jams in here, this is this gap isn't big enough for two pieces of ore to come through. And if two come down here at the same time, they'll just jam. Same thing may well be able to happen here. However, you have one side that's a lot steeper and one side that's a lot shallower. So that may help in sort of one of them pushing the other out of the way. Um, the other thing is that this has a slightly lower efficiency on the uh, on the remass there uh, for the minerals, sorry, um, but higher on the remass. Um, and that's basically it. That's the setup as you want it. Uh, don't forget you're going to want to get yourself a, um, a decent set of crew. Of course, I'm not running my astrogator at the moment. Just these three. Um, and i got journeyman, journeyman, and journeyman. Of course, though, I got them cheap and trained them up, so I'm paying low salaries. And, uh, yeah, my salaries are good. This guy I got, and maybe spending a bit too much on, and he's just sitting in station at the moment. But, you know, I can afford it. Okay, so that is that. Now... I'm going to get myself launched down to the ring. Let's talk about what sweep mining is and I'll show you sort of how you set up for a sweep. And then um, I uh, 
We'll uh, maybe talk about one or two things you want to try to avoid to get maximum output from um, from your dives. Uh, I've seemed to be able to get around the oh 400,000 mark, uh, 300,000 pretty comfortably, 400,000 if I uh, pack it in, maximize some of my process storage. Anyway, let's get into it. So when you're coming on into the rings, just uh, let it drift a bit. You want to get yourself not too deep. This is for sort of hands-free mining. Uh, this looks like a good spot. Let's pull it up. And use the autopilot to bring yourself to a nice, completely stationary position. So here I am. I'm in position. Now, for this kind of mining where you want to be able to walk away from the keyboard, I would hang around. Uh, quite shallow in, in and you can, as you can see, I'm only 1.3 uh, or 1.4 kilometers into the rings. Uh, you don't really need to go too deep. You're not looking to get a massive load of stuff at once doing this. Just sort of gonna find yourself a nice line. Now, as you can see, I'm lined up. Um, this may or may not be the best way to go. In fact, I may want to go north. In fact, I, I will, I, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go upring, whatever that may be. Now, then it's simply a matter of pushing yourself forward. The uh, point defense microwave arrays will acquire targets and fire automatically. You kind of just have to fly in their general direction. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to fly in the general direction of the nearest cluster, uh, preferably just straight up or straight down. That way you stay at the same depth. Uh, more or less in this in the ring and as you come along through a, uh, a pile of asteroids like I'm going to here you can see there's a bunch ahead there'll be a gap between groups like big group groups of the you know, asteroids and you want to basically use those to turn around maximizing the time that you have your ore in your uh, in your processing unit is going to help you really sort of get the most out of your dive and that's what you want to do you want to have a steady flow of material coming in and getting shot down into the throat of your uh, MPU now I'm not really you know caring what I get um, of course you know beryllium's excellent and uh, all, all the uh, vanadium or whatever it's called that I can get the better but I, I'm just going to take everything and process everything down. Um, in so far as like running your, look at this one coming. Oh, just caught it. Uh, running your, um, your your process cargo is limited. So you you've only got uh, twenty four thousand kilograms worth of space for each mineral. You're gonna fill one of those up quickly before the others. It's it's highly possible that that will happen. I wouldn't worry about like the waste that will occur after that point. I would more, got a bit of a problem happening at the entrance. Uh, I would more worry about just keeping going. Uh, yeah, so as you can see here, I've got a bit of an issue going on. Now what you can do to try to, oh my God, the mouse. Try to fix that, just sort of kick it, kick the stuff out of it and let it shove it back down the throat. And that will help to clear the throat out of it. That can be a real pain. Um, if you do jam in the stuff in here too quickly, you can get to a point where you get such a full cargo that it becomes really difficult to uh, process, um, you know, to unjam the net throat of the processing unit and you just end up full and going home. Uh, it's, it's easier sort of thing than mucking about, thrusting around, trying to get it all sorted out. Uh, I do know that you use more game time in that transfer period when you go back to Enceladus and, uh, and come down to the rings, but you know, uh, real life time is um, so much more eminently valuable than game time that you know I, I really don't care about that. I want to play in a way that's convenient for me, not you know, time grind. Time grind is the worst kind of grind. Uh, yeah awful anyway and as you can see here I've done pretty well with picking uh, going going up um, there's lots of material 
that is being shoved on down and I'm just running through processing it. I'm going to skip forward until I uh, need to come to a stop and uh, we'll pick up there. G'day, it's Editing Mike here and yes, sorry, I um, forgot my microphone was still off. But as you can see here, I've come to the end of that section of asteroids and I want to turn and you may have noticed that I have turned my ship beyond 90 degrees and that's very much on purpose so that when I stop the ore isn't sort of clumped onto the side it will be forced to the rear of the ship just along the side of the uh, in, inside of the cargo bay. Now what I'm going to do is push my ship on over um, after I just quickly grab this so I'm going to move my ship over to the right of the screen there, stop it, and come on down. However, I will let Mike from the past continue with the uh, real-time uh, narration or voiceover. Uh, bloody mute buttons. Oh my god, the microphone went off. Okay, so as you've seen there, I have now turned myself around and I'm getting ready for uh, the next sweep. I can't believe I left the microphone off. I'll have to do uh, apologies for switching from post to present or past to future Michael. However the hell that's going to work. Uh, in, 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 yeah, I'm sorry for that hurting brain. Okay, so I'm still processing as I'm coming along and I could even slow down just a little. Come to a complete stop. That's probably a good place to come to a stop. Everything's settled down in my hull, in the cargo, we bring these two rocks in. Now I'll probably not even wait for those rocks, I think I'll just get moving right away. And that way you'll... Oh, nice shot mate. That way everything is nice and settled inside my hull. And I don't have to worry about, you know, spilling when I open my jaws. What's going on with you? Why is the view stuck? Yeah. As you can see, this means if you find a nice bit of, you know, the right ore that you're looking for in these, uh, in these Euro stories, then uh, you can just sweep right through and clear up an entire section of the rings um, not having to worry about you know pirates coming and all that you don't have to sit here and pilot this you could get something to rest it on enter and the ship will take care of itself as long as you keep an ear out for um, approaching objects on your Doppler radar and um, you know do something if you have to one of the other nice things is that um, as objects are thrown down the gullet of the ship into the cargo bay it tends to ram everything down and having it all sort of spread out and then rammed down again it, it doesn't jam up so much you know, get a nicer flow into the MPU as opposed to um, doing it with thrust which is uh, easier to end up with a jam if you do end up with a jam you can try thrusting side to side or thrust forward, thrust back, thrust forward, thrust back um, to shake the ore apart and then ramming it down uh, by thrusting forward again at the end. Now this ingestion rate is probably a little bit quick. I'm going to end up full very soon and finding it difficult to process ore. If you ever find yourself in this situation, you can just close the jaws and slow the ship down, re-accelerate to the speed you require or desire, and, uh, you know, continue mining. You gotta watch your microwave defense arrays, because they will, they will shoot things, uh, and not care what's behind those things, you know, namely other spaceships. Um, I've accidentally shot a miner, pissed them off before, but they forgave me. 
They're also extremely good in a defensive situation, basically guaranteeing that you've got disabling fire on the target and allowing you to get away. Also, that can be used so if you um, disable the target and then you know ram into it gently and then accelerate the target, as, you know, uh, and and leave it with no control. Uh, Asteroid can do the pretty 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 nice job on it for you, so you don't really need the offensive weapons. These defensive weapons and uh, also then you've also got your thrust as well so disable them and give them a good hit with the rear engine yeah yeah you see this is now i think i may just let it do this and show you it, it just gets this too full right, clean that one close the beak and turn Pilot to uh, stop the ship. It's not going to fit. <laughs> and you can see I've got a jam down there now. Close. All right, that's all. It's all wastage. Don't worry about it. I'll turn off my collection drive and uh, stop the ship to transfer back to Enceladus. Whee! Off you go. And that's kind of what can happen, you see, I've not got an incredible haul, only uh, 250 grand, and the ship's jammed. Um, pretty well full, without spilling my cargo and reloading, um, I've got to go back. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's kind of why you need to run slowly, or at least slower than I was, uh, and watch the rate of ingestion. That is if you're looking, you know, if you get the, uh, the very large ship uh, with multiple cargo, uh, return containers, automated cargo containers. You're going to have to be careful of that. Although your mining rate with that will be a lot slower, as it only has two hard points. Uh, so really, uh, it's you know one defense dish and one uh, collection uh, haul drone module. I think that'd be all you can run. But. We've made it back. We've not been harassed by any pilots. I could have done that by coming to the computer twice, basically get to the uh, get to the rings, um, set up my initial sweep, turn around when it's done, and then come back to the computer when that's done and go home. And that would have been, you know, I would have been free to do other things in the meantime and completely safe as long as I keep an eye on the screen and can attend to it if something happens. Um, I imagine you could probably get away with a little bit of uh, not bothering, you know, about attending to watch the screen. But if you wanted to, um, yeah. So yeah, only two hundred fifty grand out of that. Mm. Not a huge haul, but still, you know, pays bills. Still at all. Flood the market. And so there you go. I hope that you find this helpful, and uh, it takes you from this sort of mid-range ship onto one of these bad boys. The ATK-225, made by Titan Heavy Industries and Antonov. So yeah, and this is a quite a quite a cool, quite a large ship. Lots of places for those little cargo containers, and you can mine long duration. But I don't know if that's going to be really the game style I want to go for. Um, sounds like a lot of time on my bum here in the front of the computer, and and. Uh, well, there's lots to do in life. I don't really like grind. Get one of these. See, this comes with a high stress hard point. So you can see another arm on this bad boy. Yeah, kind of like that. Anyway, there you go. That is all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found those tips useful. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and let YouTube know that I'm putting out the good stuff. Um, happy to answer any questions down below if, uh, or, you know, see uh, any any hints or tips you have down there i'm not saying i know everything about this game it's just the most efficient method that i have found so far to fill that piggy bank anyway rock on be safe fly well and uh or, or be well and fly safe and i'll catch you next time